everyone, welcome back at Charlotte from At Charlotte's House. Today, I'm joining some friends for a scrap wood challenge. So I'm out in my shed trying to figure out what I'm gonna make. Stay tuned. The good thing about being a beginner woodworker is that I make lots of mistakes when I'm building things, which means I have lots of scrap wood. I am trying to use the smaller pieces of scrap wood because I can often find something else to do with the larger pieces of scrap wood. What I've come up with is maybe not very creative, but I think it'll be pretty useful for us coming into summer. I'm gonna try to make a tray. We eat outside as much as we can in the summer, which means we're bringing five five plus plates of food from the kitchen to the table on the patio and a tray would be really, really useful. I'm gonna try to make it pretty so it's not just functional, but it's also something that I like looking at. These little strips are the sides of two by four lumber. When I'm building with two by fours, I try to shave off about a quarter inch on either side just so the lumber looks a little bit more polished. And I have no idea why, but I saved these. So I think that's what I'm going to start with. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them down into squares on my miter saw. I've already marked the cut line so they don't have to measure each time. Next up, sanding. For the tray itself, I have a bunch of plywood scraps that I figure I might as well use. So I've picked the ones that have the straightest edges and I'm going to tape these together so I can cut them all to the same length. I'm just gonna use wood glue to glue all of my strips together. I'm gonna try to straighten this edge as best I can. Worst case scenario, I can run this through my table saw if I really wanna clean up the edge, but I think I can do just fine with my sander when I'm finished. And it's a tray, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm gonna use just a straight edge. And this is gonna be my guide. Let's get started. While the base of the tray is drying, I am going to get to painting my squares. And I think I'm gonna try a buffalo check pattern. So the first thing I'm gonna do is divide my squares into four colors. So one color is gonna stay untouched, one color is gonna be painted blue, one color is gonna be painted a darker green, and then one color is gonna be painted a mixture of the blue and the green and hopefully they're gonna come together to make a buffalo check pattern. You're welcome to do this neatly if you like, but I try to get as much paint on my fingers as possible. For the frame of the tray, I'm using these, they look like they're dowels, but they're actually, I think they're leftover cuts from some one by sixes that I was ripping down. I had enough to get the perimeter. I mitered the corners. Those will sit up right there. And I'm gonna use some wood glue and some brad nails to attach them. And then I'm ready to glue my decoration inside the tray. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to arrange all those pretty squares that I painted into my pattern. I'm not pressing these down quite yet because I think I'm gonna have to adjust the spacing just a little bit. This first row is the most important row because it's gonna be a grid 
So if I get the first row right, then I can just copy it for all the other ones. So my tray has sat overnight and I have sanded it and now I'm ready to mix up the epoxy that I'm going to pour on top of it because this is really uneven. So I don't want the surface of this tray to be this bumpy so I thought a clear coat might be sort of fun. I am not great at mixing this but in general you have two parts that you need to mix dead evenly together. You have to be super careful that there is no moisture anywhere in the cup. I'm hoping that this amount will be enough to cover the whole thing, but I have some extra cups ready if necessary. This is my sort of hacky way to do this, but I make a mark on the cup that I know will be dead even half and half. And I do this when I'm not necessarily sure that I'm gonna be mixing the entire contents of the epoxy. And the type I'm using, I need to do a double mix. So I'm gonna stir it together in this cup for two minutes, and then I'm gonna transfer the contents into a second cup and mix it for another minute. Mixing is the most important thing that you're gonna do with any sort of epoxy resin. That's what activates the hardener. If you don't mix it enough, you're gonna end up with soft, squishy epoxy, and that is no good. So I've mixed this for more than two minutes, and now I'm gonna transfer it to a second container and mix it for a little bit longer. Making sure to scrape down the sides, and I'm also gonna use a new mixing stick. Hey Siri, set a timer for one minute. One of the party tricks that you can do when you're working with resin is that you can run a torch over the surface to draw the bubbles out. I think all of the bubbles are basically gone and now we wait. 